Welcome to this week's episode of Crush. The show where we talk about your favorite teen heartthrobs from the 90s and 2000s. This week's crush is Michael Pitt. He looked pathetic. He was scared. And he was trembling. I put my hand on his chest. I looked into his eyes and he said, you're a good son. Before we get into this one, please remember to save and share this video to let this infernal app know to show it to other people and help indoctrinate them into the cult of Megs. Also, these are micro documentaries and Michael has been working for almost 30 years. It's a long time. So if I don't cover one of your favorite projects, please feel free to mention it in the comments in a friendly and respectful way. Thanks. Michael Carmen Pitt was born on April 10th, 1981 in West Orange, New Jersey. Happy belated birthday, Michael. Growing up, Michael was a self-proclaimed troubled kid who had attended three-ish high schools by the age of 16 and had even had a bit of a layover at the Essex County Youth House for some of that trouble. He was an artsy kid who had no outlet for his self-expression and wasn't being challenged in any way. His schools put him in special classes, and it wasn't until he was assigned catcher in the rye that he actually cared about anything. He still failed that class, though, because he wasn't ready to finish the end of the book because he just didn't want it to end. At 14, he began hitching rides with his girlfriend to her classes at the American Academy for the Dramatic Arts in Manhattan. It was there that he met one of the professors, Bill Bartlett. It was Bill who was one of the first people who would tell Michael he was smart at anything. As Michael stood on a chair and belted his heart out, Bill said that he just knew that he was looking at maybe one of the greatest actors in the world. It was that talent that made Bill overlook the fact that Michael didn't have any money to pay for the class. Eventually, Michael dropped out of high school and headed to New York without a penny to his name. At 19, he was cast in a play by Naomi Wallace where he made 200 $50 a week. It allowed him to rent his first apartment above a palm reader. During that play, he encountered who he thought was a police officer attempting to arrest him, but it was actually a casting director. That casting director recommended Michael for a role in one of the biggest teen shows of the 90s, Dawson's Creek. Does this mean you want me to return the ring? Not on your life. This is the best looking Hungarian red pinky ring I've ever gotten. <laughs> and besides, it reminds me of you, which makes it pretty invaluable. He played Henry Parker, a freshman football player who had a crush on Jen Lindley, played by Michelle Williams. The two ended up dating, but eventually broke up when Henry transferred to a different college. Michael appeared in 15 episodes across three seasons, opting not to sign on for another season. Instead, he chose to take on more movie roles like that of Coleridge in Finding Forrester with Sean Connery. In 2001, he took his first step towards indie darlingdom when he appeared as Tommy Gnosis in Hedwig and the Angry Inch. That same year, he appeared in Bully with Brad Renfro, who is also on this playlist, and Nick Stahl. He continued picking up darker roles and in 2002 appeared in the major motion picture Murder by Numbers, where he played Justin Pendleton, who plans a perfect crime with his classmate Richard, played by Ryan Gosling. The two starred alongside Sandra Bullock. In 2003, he appeared in The Heart is Deceitful Above All Things with a pair of very young Sprouse twins. It's also where he met Asia Argento. The two dated for a year and were briefly engaged for a few months. She reportedly ended that relationship much to Michael's dismay. The following year, he appeared in M. Night Shyamalan's star-studded The Village with Sigourney Weaver, William Hurt, Joaquin Phoenix, Bryce Dallas Howard, and you get the point. That same year, he met model and musician Jamie Beauchert at an East Village bar where she was bartending. It was her first day on the job. Both were just coming out of relationships and tried to take it slow, but slow doesn't really seem to be Michael's default setting. In 2005, he would appear in Gus Van Sant's Last Days with Lucas Haas and his ex-girlfriend Asia Argento. Last Days was heavily inspired by the life of Kurt Cobain and Michael played all the songs himself. Two years later, he would take a step off of his usual dark and twisty path to appear opposite Kira Knightley in Silk, but obviously he had to maintain some sort of balance in the force and also appeared as a psychopath in Funny Games with Naomi Watts and Tim Roth. By 2009, Michael's bank account was starting to feel the weight, or lack thereof, from his controversial career choices, which is why the opportunity to appear in Boardwalk Empire couldn't have come at a better time. Boardwalk became one of HBO's cult shows, throwing Michael back into the spotlight. He appeared in numerous articles alongside Jamie, his now fiancé. But his run would be short-lived and his character, Jimmy Dormady, wouldn't live to see season three, but not because producers didn't want him to. What was initially reported as creative differences became reports of bad behavior on set. Michael was, and I quote, horrendous to work with and would often forget his lines. 
Boardwalk producers weren't the only ones to end the relationship with the actor. His agent cut ties, too. After Boardwalk ended, he appeared in Seven Psychopaths with Colin Farrell, Woody Harrelson, Sam Rockwell, and Christopher Walken. Michael has also supplemented his acting career through modeling, and in 2012, he was named the face of Prada menswear. He also appeared in two Rag and Bone campaigns. In 2014, he landed a reoccurring role in Hannibal as Mason Verger, but left the show after he only appeared in three episodes and was replaced by Joe Anderson. But Hannibal wasn't his only breakup that year. His relationship with Jamie also ended. In 2015, he made his directorial debut when he landed a self-directed campaign for Rag and Bone. 2017 was the year he appeared in the polarizing Ghost in the Shell with Scarlett Johansson. Michael seemed to work steadily, putting out a project a year, including an appearance in the miniseries Lisey's Story with Julianne Moore, but then in 2022, things seemed to go awry. That July, police were called to a block in Bushwick after Michael had taken a man's phone and then used it to repeatedly hit the man in the head. The man got away with minor injuries and Michael was arrested for assault and petty larceny. Two months later, police were called to that same block after they received reports that a man was throwing objects at people, uh, reportedly from the roof of a building. Michael was seen walking around shirtless in shorts and a scarf earlier that day. They strapped him to a gurney and wheeled him to a waiting ambulance. He seemed to take a much-needed break from the limelight until 2023 when he appeared in Black Flies with Sean Penn. When he appeared at Con with the film, he looked much better than he had the previous summer appearing in an all-black Celine suit to promote his new movie. Michael's Boardwalk co-star Jack Huston made his directorial debut that same year with Day of the Fight. Jack had Michael in mind for the role of Mike Flanagan when he wrote the script over the course of 10 days during the old pandemic. But Michael's appearance almost lost Jack his financing as backers and producers didn't want to work with Michael, whose reputation was not not great. Jack fought for his friends saying he's wondrous, he is unpredictable, he melts your heart, he breaks your heart. After the first day, Michael's naysayers came up to Jack and told him that the character wouldn't be anything without Michael. Michael's done a few projects in the last few years and does seem to be doing better than he had been two years ago, thankfully.